Now, what are we, we looking at? at? Perimeter, we made a perimeter drive so we could get into the forest here. And so if there was ever a fire, the firemen could get in. Where before it was like on the other side of the property here. There's no way you can get through this. And uh, so we just finished this up this last few weeks ago. All right. So the idea here is we got rid of all this brush, put it in a few burn piles to dispose of, and then what's called ladder fuel, which are little small trees like these right here behind this big one, mm -hmm. okay, that if the fire came through, would catch into them, and that would bring the fire up into the crown of the forest. So those trees have all been removed too, see? Now we left a few, like there's one there and one there, but that's because they're in that little draw, and I want to keep the draw cool and shady. Okay, so let's walk down this way a bit. So now if you look over this way, this is what the area looked like before we started removing the brush and what they call the ladder fuel, the tiny little trees that'll get the forest fire into the main canopy of the forest. So we pulled all that stuff up, piled it into burn piles to dispose of the refuse, and then all this burn ash will get covered with dirt and this will be really totally nice nutritious soil for our wildflower and forb planting that we're going to put in all of these areas that we've cleaned up. So as you can see this is what it was. You can't walk through this. So what we've got now is this cleaned up area now that makes the whole place just a, a little park, a little playground. As you see this area, all that brush that we looked at a minute ago has been piled into burn piles and then burnt. And now the areas where you can see where the tractor has been on the dirt and the soil to get the brush out, that's all going to be planted with wildflowers and forbs, which are nutritious plants for wildlife. Okay, this is interesting because this is the property line. And this is forest activities over there. So keep in mind that we're going to look at in a minute. But this brush has now been turned out here. And look at, we used to have a Sasquatch trail through there. And now we call it Sasquatch Park. <clears throat> okay, so as we were looking at the forest activities that we've done in the brush, here on the, the adjacent property, this is the example of what people normally do. They go in and take seven or 10 acres of forest and clear cut it and leave a few seed trees. But that option versus Sasquatch Park. Okay. And so this little draw here is a snow melt draw that carries water out into the forest or out through the forest into what will be the wetlands, which is the big project coming up. So you can see through the forest here, this is all cleared up area where we've gotten rid of the ladder fuels and the brush. But you see this little draw here. Well, this draw is wildlife habitat all the summer, and it runs water during snow melt and into the spring. So we want to be careful not to disturb the draw and leave brush for habitat, but also to keep the jaw shady in the summer. So as you look through here, even though there's debris and stuff in here, this will all get grown over with the grasses, but it's still now shady so that we won't get a, a warmed up draw. And it'll be a beautiful spot for the wildlife to come to. Okay, so we'll just walk down this draw a couple of feet. And you'll see one of the other reasons why we protect the draw. Come on down here, Steve. All right, so the reason we protect these draws is to keep the environment cool. And we also don't want to destroy everything in the draw like this really old dead stump here because if you look at it, it has these holes in it these are woodpecker holes that later on turn into habitat for bird nests and other critters to use so you leave these standing because if you knock them down they're not forest habitat for wildlife looking up for the little draw and you can see all through the forest how we've cleared it up we've got spacing in the canopy the fire hazard is reduced down to zero almost and this is going to make a very very healthy forest and so now as you pan on down, you can say we've got it cleared all the way to the hayfield. And down there in the hayfield is where we're going to do the wetland restoration. As we finish walking down the draw, 
you can see the hay field out here, but this area we cleaned for fire management two or three years ago, and this has already grown back, and this is what the area we just worked on will look like in two years. So in the years in the 1900s when they logged this, they built these berms with these ditches to keep the water from flowing out into the field so they could make it into agricultural land. So this gathers water, but it stops the flow of the water out into the hay field and it puts it into a drainage ditch. And we're going to fix all that and put it back into the natural wildlife habitat in the hay field. So now we're at the edge of the forest and we're going to walk down here into the meadow to give you an idea of what's going to go on down here. And as we go down, I wanted you to check out this anthill. How's this for an anthill? Make a fine pillow, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> now we're headed out into the, the hay field, and this is the area that's going to be the transition into this will all become wetlands like it was two or three hundred years ago. Marshes, beaver ponds, cattails, bulrushes, all kinds of wildlife habitat, waterfowl habitat, ducks, geese, deer, raccoon, bear, elk, moose. We're going to have it all here. It's going to be a banana split for all of them. So if you look around, this whole circumference out to the roadbed is going to get converted from hayfield to wetlands. Creeks, marshes, hopefully beaver ponds, and a whole heck of a lot of new habitat rather than just an old hayfield. So we had the forest side on this area, and then on this area, this all, to make this better agricultural land when it was logged, they ditched the creek. In other words, they took a big old steam shovel and dug a creek, big ditch. All the water was in the field now goes in the ditch. Okay, so if you look at this area, you see a couple of kinds of grasses. This coarse yellowish grass now, you can see little divots in here. This is remnants of old beaver ponds that have been hayed over for all the years but the soil has been influenced by having a beaver pond on it for hundreds of years. So it grows grasses a little differently. But you can see by where the grass is, where the old stream channels were. So this, you're now in the middle of a future stream channel. How's that look? I'm sorry. So if you look here, just imagine the stream channel go around that little turn Another turn, another turn, another turn, another turn, as it heads towards the road. All that's going to be back to life. Okay, so what we're looking at here is the creek that's been running through this ditch for many, many years. And it's actually cut its little channel of meanderings through the ditch. But if you look carefully, you can see it's down to bedrock. So this is how much soil is in the meadow before you get to bedrock. Because this was an important stream a hundred and some years ago, it used to have steelhead spawning in it. So when we're done with our restoration project, it'll connect with other projects that are being restored for steelhead habitat, and we will have steelhead spawning up and down this creek. Okay, now, carefully, I'll be quiet. Listen to the babbling stream. Music to my ears. How about you, Steve? It's beautiful. Yeah. So that's what we're working on. You know, makes a good thing for good people. And good wildlife. <laughs> and good water. <laughs>